week of Epiphany 3, Monday, Sinking God's Word into Little Ears. And it shall be, when your son asks you in time, saying, What does this mean? You shall say to him, By the strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Exodus 13, verse 14. Dearly beloved, teaching children about the holy, living, one true God, His eternal plan of salvation, and how it was carried out in time, is one of the greatest responsibilities and privileges of being a parent. Hebrew parents were to tell of the seed of the woman who would be the Savior and who would rescue them from the house of bondage. They were to tell of the Lamb's blood, the hyssop, the Lord's Passover, the death of the firstborn, the baptism they underwent in the Red Sea, and the freedom from their captivity. Christian parents tell the same stories and teach the same doctrines, which include the New Testament account of these same truths. Helping apply the blood of the Passover lamb on the doorposts of the hearts of these little sinners, as well as all the other blessings that the Lord wants them to have, is a holy honor and a commanded task. Do these little ones always understand exactly what took place, how it applies to them, or what it will all mean to them? No. However, you are called to teach them the basics, repeat over and over the stories and doctrines that the Lord would have them know. In time, they will come to understand, particularly when they are in the midst of a trial. They will be equipped to know of their sin, to know their Savior, and to apply the doctrine to life. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. Mark 9, verse 30. But while everyone marveled at all these things that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand this saying, and it was hidden from them, so that they did not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about this saying. Luke 9, verses 43 through 45. This is now the second time that Jesus told his disciples about his upcoming suffering. He would be betrayed in the hands of men. How could this be? Jesus is God. When threatened in Nazareth and other places, he merely walked through the crowds and left that area. And what of this betrayal? Which of those close to Jesus would betray him? He wouldn't allow it, would he? These children of God simply did not understand that Jesus was going to let a disciple betray him and let his enemies take him. Jesus was going to suffer, be crucified, and die for everyone. Here is the Passover Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. His holy blood, shed for us and applied to our hearts in baptism, covers us, saves us, cleanses us, and protects us from our own sinful nature and the old evil foe. The disciples did not understand all of this, and they were afraid to ask, What does this mean? In addition, these children of God were not ready to understand all of this, and how it was going to apply to them. Therefore, it was hidden from them so that they did not perceive it. Nevertheless, they were to let Jesus' words sink down into their ears so that, later, these words would be remembered, understood, and put into practice in their lives and in the lives of others, particularly in the hearts and souls of the children, and the children's children, and generations not yet born. Prayer Lord Jesus, my ransom and my Redeemer, I confess that I do not understand everything about you and your plan of salvation written in the Bible. Send your Holy Spirit that I may search the Scriptures and grow in faith and in knowledge of what you have done for me and for my family. Abide with me as I make application and live my life to the glory of your name. Amen. Hymn 151, stanzas 5 and 6. Thou hast suffered men to bruise thee, that from pain I might be free. Falsely did thy foes accuse thee, 
thence I gain security. Comfortless thy soul did languish, me to comfort in my anguish. Thousand, thousand thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto thee. Thou hast suffered great affliction, and hast borne it patiently, even death by crucifixion, fully to atone for me. Thou didst choose to be tormented, that my doom should be prevented. Thousand, thousand thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto thee.